It's a reasonable afternoon outside with a bit of sun, so that's the perfect opportunity to play with another solar device. But this isn't a charge controller, it's an EP Ever serial port to Ethernet converter module. What on earth is that, Adam? Well, I'm going to show you. Inside the box, uh, we've got uh, an invoice and the device itself. And uh, as you can see, EP Ever Wi Fi 01, the eBox Wi Fi 01, and it's an RS485 to Wi Fi converter. So it's a simple little box. We've got a RJ45 socket on there, uh, a little reload button inside, and uh, that's pretty much it, apart from two LEDs on the top, power and link. Uh, you also get a brown, brown, not my favourite colour, but brown Cat5 cable. Yes, it is Cat5. Uh, for RS-485 communication and a manual, uh, which is pretty basic. Just one piece of paper, and as you can see from here, it's compatible with the Landstar B series, the uh, Viewstar A series, the Tracer A, which I have, the Tracer BN, the E-Tracer and the I-Tracer in certain guises there, slightly different connector type on those E-Tracer and I-Tracer, but we can also see that this is actually to integrate a mobile application into your solar charge controller. And EP ever say, realise wireless monitoring function of the solar controller and inverter, this will work with some inverters as well. Mobile phone app, plug and play, simple, convenient to set, high performance CPU, low power consumption, no need for external power supply, it is going to be powered over that RS485 port. Communication up to 50 meters. Now I'm really pleased to have this, I saw this on the EP Ever website uh, a number of weeks ago and uh, tried to find one and was struggling on the internet to find one so I contacted EP Solar and said where on earth do I get one of these devices? They said we've just sent some to a company in the UK so get in touch with them. So I did and it was the Solar Energy Alliance and I contacted them and their managing director got in touch with me and said as soon as they arrive in the country I'll let you know. And a few days ago, that happened. He contacted me and I was able to purchase one of these and he sent me this very quickly and thank you to him for that. So without further ado, let's get it plugged in to my Tracer A series. So I'll get this brown cable out and uh, plug one end in here and the other end into my solar charge controller. Right, I'll just plug in the other end into my solar charge controller. There we go, both lights come on for a second and then the power LED illuminates and, well, what else is there to report? There's uh, not much more to say. Of course, what we need is the mobile application. Now, unfortunately, the screen is a little bit reflective on this old Android tablet here. Uh, but of course what we need to do is go to a browser and download the application from the EP Solar website. So I will just, and on the EP Solar website we go to technical support and downloads and then we go into the software and app tab, all a bit small on here. And there is an Android application, Wi-Fi and BLE, well, Bluetooth uh, Low Energy. And there's a download button. Now you will need a File Explorer program, and I found this one, ES File Explorer. And uh, I can't particularly recommend it, it's just the first one I found, and it does seem to work. Um, and in my Downloads folder is the APK for this application it's in a zip file that's why you need a file explorer and uh, we'll install this 
and of course it's worth remembering in your settings you will need to turn on that you're allowing third-party applications to be installed and that's been completed but I'm not going to open it immediately because I know that I need to connect to this in the Wi-Fi settings so if we go through settings and Wi-Fi it shows up there as eBox Wi-Fi 01 so we will connect to that obtaining an IP address and connected so finally we need to open the application and we're in so the first thing it's doing is showing me some instructions, but this font's a bit difficult to tap to enter the zone, Wi-Fi or BLE. Yeah, that, I can't be bothered with these instructions. Let's just go straight in. So there's our first option. Are we, have we got the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth low energy version? Because it's available in both. Mine's the Wi-Fi device connected. And it's a charge controller, so we can click the top icon. And we can see we've got some real-time monitoring. So, according to this, it's not charging. Not sure about that. None of these numbers are in there. So let's refresh by dragging it down. And there we are. We're in float charge on my tracer. These solar panels are at 32 volts. We're bringing in just over 1 amp, which is 34 watts. The battery is at just over 13 volts and 2.65 amps are going into it, 34.82 watts again. So it's saying the conversion is absolutely perfect. And the load information's there also, so that's quite interesting. Battery settings. So again, if we read from the solar charge controller, we can see that I've set my battery to user type. It's a 12 volt battery, and presumably if we're going to advanced, here's all my charging parameters. Float charging voltage is 13.8. Uh, charging limit, 14.5. All that stuff that I set up in a previous video using my cheap RS485 cable is showing up here, so that's quite handy. And presumably, actually, we can change something. So if I wanted to change the float voltage to 13.9 volts and send that, that's now the setting on the solar charge controller. And what's the final section here? The load section. So I'm in manual mode at the moment, and apparently manual off by default you can turn that on or you can change to turn on for the different light settings so when when the solar panel gets down to 5 volts wait 10 minutes and then turn on presumably and turn off when the solar panel voltage gets to 6 volts those sorts of things or we could do a light on timer so that's 2 hours after dark and two hours before dawn or real time control we can actually set the clock and set that for real time on and off but I keep mine in manual mode so having a quick look inside we'll disconnect the RJ45 cable and uh, we'll give it a go warranty void no doubt and uh, it's got a lie link sticker on top of the Wi-Fi module but inside is pretty much exactly what we'd expect some control chips, an RS485 chip which I'm guessing is that one there again it's conformal coated so it's difficult to read the numbers uh, but yeah, that's interesting let's pop the lid back on Another thing I've noticed as a bit of a networking geek is the IP address that gets assigned to your tablet or your phone or whatever from the e-box is 11.11.11.100 .11 .11 .100. 
And technically, that's a public address. I don't think they should be issuing that, really. Although, it is just a peer-to-peer -peer network. You are only connecting these two devices together, so I guess you'll get away with it. So I quite like the EP Ever Ebox Wi-Fi 01. It would be better if we could connect it to our home Wi-Fi networks, so we're not having to swap the Wi-Fi connection on the tablet or the phone every five minutes to uh, check in with our solar charge controller. But I think that's what I'm going to use it for this winter, certainly, because it will be really useful to be able to monitor my battery level from inside the house. Let's say it's an evening and my load is on. If my battery looks to be getting a bit low, I can remotely turn it off without coming out in the depths of winter, the hammering rain or snow or what have you. Now, as this product has just launched, um, pricing is still a bit hit and miss. The Solar Energy Alliance are selling these for £20, but I have seen them on eBay going for over £60. So you'll do well to shop around. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe if you can, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.